joining us tonight uh, another day of the first week of the month of october for the series that we have lined up for you guys uh, as always we're going to be starting with the icebreaker for the people watching on youtube hello thanks for joining us uh, tonight's icebreaker is what is your favorite snack so i know yesterday we asked what's your favorite dessert so let's uh, let's do snacks today what is your favorite snack so yesterday i said you know any type of oreos in fused in any dessert is like amazing but like plain oreos i can eat that all day even any types of like potato chips or you know anything i need to like i mean they're they're technically junk food but you know it's it's a snack right like what do you what do you need as a snack huh something healthy no i mean at least not me but i'd love to know what you guys think let us know by using the q a chat box again the question was what is your favorite snack for those of you guys that are just joining let me know what you guys think. Mm, snack wise, I definitely like cookies. Um, Oreos, yeah, it's always a good one. Um, ooh, Caleb says Cheez Its. Yes. Cheez Its. Oh, yeah, that's true. I mean, is it just me or this is very salty? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Um, what other ones? Chips. I feel like I feel like chips. You know, everybody says chips and like you know the classic ones, but like, what about popcorn? Yeah. Or do you only eat it when you're like watching a movie or something? Yeah, but also after t like after some time, like the like butteriness and everything, then it like coats your mouth, and then it just oh, yeah, like yeah. I'm not into it. Yeah. It gets too much. Yeah, I know exactly <laughs> what you mean. <laughs> so it's it's like it's good for a little bit. I do like like caramel popcorn. That stuff is good. Mm. But again, after a while, it's just like way too sweet. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. That's definitely true. Yeah. For those of you guys that are joining on, welcome to Prayer House, guys. We are doing the Q, I mean, not Q&A, icebreaker for tonight, which is what is your favorite snack? Let us know using the Q&A uh, box or Q&A function that we have here. Uh, I feel like another snack is like, especially if you go for like, I don't know, if you go to your cousin's house or something, or if you're like, if you're planning like this big, like, you know, like meetup at somebody's house, there's always going to be Tostitos there. I just know it with the dip. <laughs> like, I, I like those. So that's why I was like, you know what? Tostitos are pretty good too. Like, especially the, oh guys, have you ever mixed uh the salsa with the, the, the cream of spinach or whatever dip that is? Oh no. Oh, like People the mix spinach. Artichoke people, dip. Yeah, the spinach artichoke dip mm -hmm. and then their salsa. Apparently, people mix it together. It's uh, oh. it's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> like our spinach artichoke dip is really good, though. Yeah, yeah. Warm That's like a, a go-to appetizer for me. For sure. Faith, what do you think? <laughs> About Tostitos? No, I mean, just like, what's your favorite <laughs> snack? So, like, sure, Tostitos, sure. Oh. <laughs> um, I don't have a strong opinion on Tostitos specifically. <laughs> I haven't done the spinach artic or spinach whatever if you're talking about the mixture. I haven't done oh, that. Oh yeah, the mixture. I think I just prefer like straight queso, like you know queso mm -hmm. with it. Mm. I think that's yeah, better. Yeah, yeah. Um, but my personal favorite snack. I was just telling them. I don't know if this actually is my favorite, but what I'm craving right now is like frosted animal crackers. Which they're usually pink and white, and they're just crackers like coated in frosting and sprinkles. It's so bad for you, but it, I don't know. It's the yeah. sweetness for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's okay. Um, someone said, in... oh, yeah, go said ahead. Takis. That's also a good choice. You guys know what yeah. Takis are, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. I, I remember when they first came out, everybody was like, God, this is so spicy. And, and this and that and obviously me coming over there like guys what is this it's pretty much it's it's more sour than i feel like it is just spicy but then again we're all i'm all loose here so you know <laughs> spices are like are in our genes but yeah what about chips like what are you guys' favorite chips like flavor like i like the sour cream and onion or like the classic regular lays mm, okay but... i like barbecue Oh, yes. I, feel I like, like I Cheetos. Cheetos. Okay. Cheetos. And like now, flaming you... hot Cheetos. Ooh, okay, I was yes. about to ask, are you just a normal Cheetos fan or like you like the other Cheetos too? 
the flaming hot i like flaming hot cheetos and then puffy cheetos but it, nice it's, it's it's good i think puffy cheetos are the best they're nice the best kind of cheeto okay <laughs> i'm not a fan of cheetos myself personally so uh yeah i know i, know. That's I don't know terrible but you're <laughs> a fan of tostitos how does that relate to Cheetos? <laughs> you said Tostitos first. And yeah, but like Cheetos. Tostitos is just the normal chip that you do. Tostitos like don't have flavor. It's the stuff you put with Tostitos. It's like rice. It's the stuff that you eat with it that makes it worth eating. <laughs> okay, That's I'll give a you point. a point there. <laughs> Hey guys, for those of you guys that are just joining, welcome to Prayer House, everybody. Uh, we're going over the icebreaker right now, which is what is your favorite snack? We're having a war on Tostitos and how they are like rice. <laughs> I mean, they're not That's... wrong. They're better with no, dip. No, Hope, you bring up a very good point. I actually didn't think of it. Like, maybe I'm yeah, not a fan of Tostitos. I'm... <laughs> I'm just a fan of the dip. Because <laughs> do you ever take it alone? Like, do you ever just take a saucer full of Tostitos? Nothing on the side? I mean, maybe when the dip finishes and I'm like too lazy to get more, then I'll start like munching on the, <laughs> the chips. <laughs> gotta be someone that just likes straight like the chips like i'm sure know. there is yeah people who are allergic to queso <laughs> <laughs> yeah or the people that can't have like sugary things like i know my parents will chow down on tostitos without like dips or anything because like I, like so my, my parents they'll do like either chips like tostitos chips or like they'll go for the classic like almonds or peanuts or whatever I'm, like it's so boring <laughs> tim says that his parents like plain tortilla chips yeah, there you go. I feel like it's a parent thing. Like, you want to see yeah. us munching on <laughs> chips. But uh, hey, guys, for those of you guys that's joining on Welcome to Prayer House, uh, we're doing the uh, icebreaker for tonight, which is what is your favorite snack? So we did dessert yesterday. So, yeah, let us know what your favorite snack is. Use the Q&A function. I'd love to hear your answers. Uh, so far, we have, a, we have a couple interesting answers. So anything from ranging from cookies to... Oreos to Tostitos to Cheetos to what was the other one? Somebody said, uh, Anu, what did you say? Cookies, Takis, yeah, yeah, Takis, Takis, yes. What about a Doritos? You guys, Doritos fans, you know, maybe it's cheese. Maybe I'm not a fan of cheese on my <laughs> snacks. Yo, Cool Ranch Doritos, bro, yeah, That's Cool Ranch, is good. Okay. Ooh, somebody said my favorite snack is animal crackers. Children's church vibes. Children yeah. church vibes. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Sam, Sam said, said flaming Doritos. Flaming okay. Doritos. Is that the cheese one that's like super spicy? Like I like Cool Ranch because you know <laughs> it's not too cheesy. So I'm, like, <laughs> I'm telling like, you, oh, I think that's what spicy. It's spicy. Like yeah. you, so you don't like creaminess of the cheese, I guess. Okay, okay. Maybe I'm like just picky on snacks because like if you put cheese on like actual food like dishes, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like cheesy snacks, I don't know, man. I can't really do cheesy Ooh. snacks. Angeline says the purple Doritos are the best. That is facts. Mm, that's the true. purple Doritos are so good. Wait, oh, we got two people saying rice cakes. Yeah, we have two that seems people a saying little rice suspicious cakes. though because okay, was... Lee Martin and Tim. <laughs> okay, where do you eat rice cakes? Like rice krispie <laughs> cheese. Rice There's some backstory are... there that they're not telling us. Yeah. No, but like rice cakes are one of those things like as soon as you eat one. Yeah, they're definitely like... together right now eating Tostitos. <laughs> like... <laughs> Yo. You guys remember Fruit by the Foot? <gasps> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I feel like that. I still get those though. So like, you know, don't mind me. I still no, they're so good. <laughs> All right, guys. It's 9.04. Uh, thank you guys for submitting your answers. That was pretty fun. <laughs> so let's get started with uh, Prayer House. Uh, again, guys, welcome to Prayer House. Uh, for those of you guys that are just joining on, uh, we just went over the icebreaker. So uh, yeah, if you come back earlier, you can participate with us. But um, for those of you guys that have been coming back for the 100 plus days that we've been doing it, we appreciate you. We thank you for coming back. Uh, I just want to start off with the mission and vision of Prayer House, which we say every day to pray bold, play to pray bold prayers to preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, but to also build that community, which is centered around Jesus Christ. Uh, but more specifically for this month of October, we, you know, our mission vision for this month at least is uh, just the bondages that people are dealing. We want to lead them to victory, whether it's through um, 
um, any issues that they have, any way we can break the stigmas of different topics that we talk about, uh, and all through just that biblical and spiritual lens. So we hope that this month uh, is a month of healing and restoration for you guys. Uh, but with all that being said, uh, let's go ahead and uh, do an opening prayer, and then we'll start off with the meeting. Let's all close our eyes and bow our heads. Gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you and we praise you, God, for just giving us this opportunity just to come into your presence and to worship you and just to hear from your word. Father, God, I just pray that as we spend this next hour in your presence that your spirit will be with us. Help us just uh, live in this presence, Father, God. I just pray for the people that are coming on. I pray for the people that are here, Father, God, that will help us just absorb everything, whether it's through the worship, whether it's through the word. Father, I just pray that your spirit will meet us in this place. Help us be breakthroughs throughout this meeting as we just worship you in this next coming minutes. Father, God, I just pray that we can worship you in truth and in spirit. I pray for the speaker tonight, Father, God, just we just pray that you be with him, anoint him, and bless him so we might be able to just learn something from your word, Jesus. We just submit everything into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So at this time, I'd like to invite the worship person for today, which is Ken. Ken, whenever you're ready, the floor is yours. Praise God. Um, I, I, I always kind of say, um, oh, when I start out. Um, <laughs> the, the, two, uh, the two songs that I picked out... Um, the first song is kind of an old one. It's uh, it's indescribable by King uh, Chris Tomlin, Tomlin. And the very last song of that line goes, "You see the depths of my heart. You love me the same." And during this during this season during this time when we're we're going into all these uh, these <laughs> these feelings of shame and and guilt and sadness, I think I think it's I think it's amazing that we know that. There's a God who sees the depths of our heart, the good, the bad, the ugly, and still loves us the same. From the highest of highs to the depths of the sea, creation revealing your majesty. From the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring, every creature unique in the song that it sings, all exclaiming, indescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing, God. All powerful, untamable, all struck, we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim. You are amazing, God. Who has told every lightning? where it should go or seen heavenly storehouses laid with stone who imagined the sun and the source to its light yet conceals it to bring us to None can fathom Indescribable Uncontainable You place the stars in the sky You know them by name You are amazing God All powerful Untamable Awestruck we fall to You are amazing, God. Indescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky, you know them by name. You are amazing, God. See the 
depths of my heart and you love me the same you are amazing God incomparable unchangeable you see the depths of my heart you love me the same you are amazing God I 
I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. Yes, I am who you say I am. When the sun sets free, oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we come into your presence, pray the man fire name. Lord Jesus, Lord, as Wilson Chatron's about to speak, Lord, I pray that you have your hands over him, Lord. Fill him with your spirit, Lord, and let every word that pours out of his mouth, Lord, flow from his heart, Lord, and let his heart be where you rest, Lord. Lord Jesus, I pray that every word that comes out of his, uh, out of his mouth is straight from you and straight from your spirit, Lord. Lord Jesus, we pray that your blessing is upon him, Lord. We thank you for the time that you've given us to gather here together, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, Ken, for just a powerful time of worship. At this time, we're going to go right into uh, the prayer request without wasting any more time. So as usual, we're going to be praying for uh, healing for uh, the COVID-19 patients, uh, the tumor that Alan is struggling with right now. Uh, and any loss and mourning from the two families listed here. And we're also going to be praying for the mental health, especially depression, uh, anxiety, different doubts and addictions. Uh, we're also going to be praying for our nation, whether it's through healthcare workers and first responders, the law enforcement, government officials, uh, and also just natural disasters affecting uh, America, but also everywhere around the world uh, as well. So for this, I'd like to invite Karen to please pray for the first half. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you and praise you for all that you've done in our lives up until this very moment. Father God, we thank you for your hand that's been resting upon us during this time that um, has so much questions and so many uncertainties, Father God. We thank you for your blessing that's been upon our lives, Father God. Lord Jesus, we pray for the those that have been affected by the pandemic that's going on, Father God. We pray that uh, your hand rests on those that are sick, Father God, those that have lost um, loved ones, Father, we pray for, particularly we pray for Stanley Joseph and Javier's father and Pastor uh, Benu Paul, Father God. We ask that you would um, heal them, Father God. Lord, your word says that by your stripes we are healed and we claim that, Father. Lord, we give Alan into your hands, Father God. We ask that you would um, touch him and heal him, Father God. Lord Jesus, I give Pastor Paul Regis's family and Sister Molly uh, Molly's family into your hands, Father, Lord, as they're grieving, Father God, as they're mourning, Father, we ask that you give them a peace that passes all human understanding, Father, that you would meet them in their loss in this time of grief, Father, Lord Jesus, that you would be um, be filling that missing place, that missing spot, Father God, in their hearts, Father, Lord Jesus, that you would comfort them far better than any man or woman can give, Father, Lord Jesus, I give... Um, those that are suffering, Father, with mental health issues into your hands, Father, those that are having, uh, struggling with depression and doubt and anxiety and addiction, Father, we give them to your hands, Father, we raise them to your throne, Father God, we ask that you cover them by your blood, Father God, and that you wash them, Father, Lord Jesus, that your healing hands would reside on them, Father God, that you would touch their heart and their minds, Father, that, Lord, they would know that there's nothing that they can't conquer, there's nothing that they cannot do with you by their side, Father God. Lord Jesus, we thank you for everything that you have done up until this very moment in all of our lives, Father God. We thank you for the blessings that you have showered upon us. We thank you for the difficult moments and difficult days that you have helped us walk through, Father God. For your word says that every day of our lives was written out before we were even born, Father God. And we realize that whatever is happening and whatever is going on, Father God, it's all by your purpose and by your plan, Father Lord, we thank you once again for everything, Lord. We ask all this in your matchless name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Karen, for praying. Uh, and now on to the second part of our uh, prayer request list. We've been praying for our workforce, uh, to the recent graduates, uh, the teachers losing jobs, and the people who are still looking for jobs. We're also going to be praying for our churches, uh, praying for healing, revival, growth, and continued blessing. So for these prayers, I'd like to invite Stephanie to please pray. 
Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for giving us this opportunity to come together as a group and just uh, pray on behalf of so many people, Lord God, and just uh, let them know that they're not alone as we learn more and more about these things, Lord God, Heavenly Father. Right now, I just uh, ask you to uphold those in the workforce, Lord God. We pray for our recent graduates and the teachers losing their jobs and those who are looking for jobs, Lord God. You have a perfect plan and purpose over every single person's life, Lord God. Remind them that you have gotten them thus far, Lord God, and you will continue upholding them and carrying them wherever they need to go, Lord God. Let them be reminded that they are not alone and that um, you have the perfect plan over their lives, Lord God, that they will be able to um, keep moving forward, Lord God, just as they've been doing thus far, Lord God. We pray for those um, who just need answers right now, Lord God, about what their next step is, Lord God. Um, we ask that for those who are taking exams and trying to find these jobs and not knowing where to turn to next, Lord God, that they be just given the encouragement that they need to know that everything will be all right, Lord God. We pray for our churches right now, Lord God, for healing, revival, and growth, Lord God, and a continued blessing Lord God we ask that you just use each and every single person on this call to just spark that revival Lord God spark that fire underneath the churches Lord God and be the generation that makes that difference Lord God that doesn't just sit back but really acts on what we believe in Lord God to make a difference and truly see and know who you are Lord God before all of those Lord God we thank you and uphold this meeting once again in your name we pray amen amen thank you so much Stephanie for praying uh, so right now, I just wanted to make a couple quick announcements before we go on to the speaker for tonight. Uh, so as you guys know, our Spotify, we record almost all the messages that you guys hear here. So if you want to re-listen to a message or uh, if you have people that uh, you think you, this message might be good for, you can find us on Spotify for the podcast section. If you just search a prayer house in the search bar, you'll be able to find it right away. Uh, also, our website, especially for this month, we have a new page now for the October event. Uh, if you go to that, you can see the whole uh, week's outlook of people coming to speak and to do worship. So you can see the topics we're also going to be speaking about on those days uh, as well. We also have a place for a prayer requests. So if you need to uh, contact us, you can definitely do that through the website. It's completely anonymous, so you don't have to give your information. We just need to know. We would just like to know what your prayer request is. You can visit this link by going to prayerhouse.live slash October. Uh, there's also a section there for uh, the Q&A uh, that we're going to be having this Friday. For the people that already submitted your questions, we see it. We appreciate you guys. Uh, for the rest of you guys, if you have any questions about the past days that you've been listening to, or even for tonight, we encourage you to use that Q&A question box. That is how we will be seeing these questions. Or if you'd like, you can also uh, DM us on Instagram. Um, but other than that, we don't have breakout rooms today. We'll be back tomorrow for that. So without wasting any more time uh, after all these announcements, I want, I want to invite uh, Phil Sanjachin to uh, speak tonight. He's a great man of God. I, I have the privilege to know him well for these past couple of months that we have been together and uh, can't wait to hear from you. Praise the Lord. I hope everyone can hear me clearly. Such a joy and honor to be here with Prayer House this evening. Oh, what a great. Thank God for this amazing group of young people with the vision, with the determination to do something for the Lord. You know, I, I just, just want to thank God for the entire leadership, you know, and, and the way things been done and uh, been moved on. You see, it's one thing to see the need, and it's a, another thing to step into that need and just do some, make something happen. We talk to people, everyone's like, I'm waiting for the right opportunity to, for something to happen. But uh, the, the opportunity alone does not do things. When COVID started, everyone had opportunity. But what makes a difference is the opportunity with the right awareness. That's what it makes a difference. And I just want to thank, uh, praise God for the leadership team of uh, Prayer House. They saw the opportunity, they had the right awareness, they jumped in and they started building their wings on their way down and God honored them. And I just, I just want to praise God for this ministry. I praise God for everything you're doing, especially setting apart this month of October to go through this season of uh, mental health uh, related issues, uh, topics related to depression and suicide, a very touchy subject, uh, but very important. So I just thank God for the direction in which this ministry is going and that vision. Um, the topic today given to me is, uh, is guilt, shame, and rejection. Of course, 
all three components are we can do a deep dive so we'll just try to play do justice with the time that we have and these are three distinct emotions that we all have experienced in our life in some shape or form different ways we experience each each of these emotions you know hebrews chapter 10 verse 14 says for by one sacrifice he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy for by one sacrifice he has made perfect forever perfect forever those who are being made holy so god in his eternal sacrifice has already made provisions for us to overcome all these three emotional needs this distinct needs that we're talking about yet my experience is even in in the in the christian realm and the many christians many born again christians are not fully free from guilt shame and rejection there was somewhere we just come together in the lord and i just want to see how and i just we just want to take some time and just encourage you from the word and let's just dive in and what i want to so we'll just go one by one and let's let's see how it goes how god takes us right so let's start first talking about the guilt so often when you talk to people people say guilt and shame you know guilt shame rejection guilt shame rejection so guilt and shame are often said in the same words or same statement but they are distinctly different right shame says there is something wrong with who i am but a guilt says there is something wrong with what i have done or i am doing or perhaps it's something wrong with what i've said something wrong with what i'm thinking right it's 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 a very negative emotion and i uh, we're just uh, doing some research and we're looking at a found that primary three reasons a lot of reasons but we can bracket them into bucket them into three reasons why people feel guilty number one you know better right so where we know what what we are doing is out of order we are not we know there's something we are not supposed to do or we are we are, we, are, we were not supposed we were supposed to do but we we did it anyways all right so or we didn't what well, something we were supposed to do we didn't do it we were not supposed to we did it and that's that's one of the reasons why we feel experience a guilt and the second reason is like when we know that we caused hurt harm or danger to someone and the third reason is when you disappoint or upset someone whom we really love or care about you know when you really disappoint someone they they you feel guilty and actually i'm a parent that our parents are actually very very mean when it comes to that you know parents especially they play that guilt card a lot right especially mothers they will play this guilt card a lot look what you make me feel look how you make me feel look you you give me headache right how many times you heard that part right? you broke my heart and suddenly there's a guilt trip that comes in like it's just trying to put guilt into the mind and hearts of people right so especially the children we play that parents play that role a lot but then guilt is something very very negative emotion that comes in so spiritually when i was thinking about the whole area of guilt so the guilt this is this is how i picture when it talk about the guilt uh we grew up parents taught us you have to read your bible pray we want to we know we went to the church we know in the night we want to sit and pray and now we here comes the end of the day we come to the bed and we start sit to pray and we say dear lord and all of a sudden everything that happened throughout the daytime comes to our mind and we feel so horrible so guilty and we're like you know god i really messed it up i messed it up really bad i don't think i'm worthy to pray you know i can't even pray but this is what i'll do tomorrow morning i'm going to wake up i'll be a good boy i'll be a good girl it's going to be a perfect day and tomorrow night i'm going to pray and next day morning we wake up and we're like all right god it's you and i it's going to be a great day it's going to be a victorious day i'm going to do what you call a victorious christian living 
And tonight I'm going to pray. Right? And we are excited. We start with a day and, and then life happens. And once the life strikes, night, you come back to pray and you're like, ah, man, I messed it up again. We're sitting to pray and are unable to pray. Let me ask you one question. Will God do anything to keep you away from him? Answer is no. So if there is a guilt that keeps you away from God, is that guilt from God or from someone else? You see, God will never do anything to keep you away from him. Guilt is one of a very strong negative emotion, a big weapon that enemy uses in the lives of people to keep them away from God. I remember when I was, uh, there have been times where I was sit for the Holy Communion, and I will be sitting in the church and for the Holy Communion with my hands lifted up on my knees, and I'm just worshiping God in the holiest of moments, and I'm just giving him praise for what he has done, and all of a sudden, Something that happened 15 years ago, 20 years ago, which I might have asked God for forgiveness around 30 or 40 times, come into my mind and I'm like, oh no. And with the hand that was lifted up, it slowly starts folding and I'm just falling down and I'm like, oh Lord, I'm not even worthy. You see, God will never do anything to keep you away from him. And if there's a guilt that's coming, that's to keep you away from it, trust me, trust in the Lord, for it is not from God. By the way, if there is a, some reminder comes, something work happens in your heart, whether you're reminded of a sin and you want to fall in the presence of God and ask for forgiveness, that's not guilt, that's conviction. And that is from God. So many a times we... We take that guilt and just live by it. Uh, you know, Isaiah chapter 61, verse 10. Isaiah 61, 10 says, I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness. You see, it, says, it goes on to say, as a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. You see, there are two things here. What Isaiah says that, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation, and he has arrayed me with robes of righteousness. He talks about garments of salvation and robes of righteousness. Many Christians here tonight that are hearing the voice, many in our community, we have covered ourselves with garments of righteous, garments of salvation, but has somehow missed out covering with them, ourselves with a robe of, of, of righteousness. See, it's when God just put that salvation, it's not just this garment of salvation he gave. We are so sure God saved us. But when we talk about being righteous of the Lord, am I righteous before God? That question is what really haunts. You know, I often ask young people, I say, are you saved? And they say, yes, we are. How many of you, are you saved? Yes, I am. Right, Tom, are you saved? Yes, I am. Remy, are you saved? Yes, I am. Faith, are you saved? Yes, I am. And you ask people, are you saved? Yes, I am. Then I ask another question. Are you are you tonight? If, are you are you hundred percent sure you're saved tonight? If Christ comes, are you very sure you'll go to heaven? You know, when I ask that question two three times, are you really saved? You see that slowly, slowly they're like, you know what? I'm not sure. I'm not sure because what happens is when you're asking there, every we have a we we clothe ourselves with garments of salvation, but suddenly things realize realization of all the wrongs we have done. And now we are really questioning, are we really righteous before God? But what the Bible says very clearly here, he has clothed you. He has covered you with garments of, he has covered you with the robes of righteousness. You see, 
He has wrapped you. He's totally arrayed you me with the robe of righteousness. You see, when you look at the finished work at the cross, the work at the cross was complete. You, we, we need to understand when we are saved, we call that you and I are righteous. The righteousness is not our own righteousness. Once we are washed with the blood of Jesus Christ, when God the Father looks at us, he looks us through the blood. And the blood of Jesus Christ covers our unrighteousness. And the Lord Jesus Christ, he covers our unrighteousness with his righteousness. And he presents us perfect before God the Father. So now when God sees us through the blood, he looks at us as righteous. He has arrayed us with the righteous. It's not your righteousness, but Christ's righteousness. Righteousness that knows no sin, which has no guilty past, which has nothing to be ashamed of. And we are covered with that righteousness. And once we come with that awareness, come before the Lord, we can stand there without any guilt, without any condemnation. Let's move on. We talk about this. So we talk about the guilt. Then the other thing we want to talk about is shame. Shame is such a cruel and ugly thing. Shame says there is something wrong with who I am. It questions the very identity of who you are and whom God designed you to be. You know, in fact, uh, growing up in the school, one of the biggest punish way the punish way the teachers used to punish you was like I mean for us it was like punishers was like they will shame you they will shame you in front of the whole class hey here is a guy who did not get the enough grades oh I know what that means <laughs> you know so but you got all this they will punish you they will punish you they will shame you they will shame you and there are many things that shames us many other things that happen in the childhood can be cause of a shame. Something that we did, we are ashamed of. And it, it just regrets us, right? And, and women or girls in general are harder on themselves in, the, in this area than men are. And I believe it has also got to do a lot with the culture. And the expectations from the culture is different. And that's what clothes people with shame. And many, there are various reasons where we, we are shamed by, we, we carry shame in our life. It could be something that was said, something that was done. But one of the more, the commonest and one of the most common shame, thing that causes shame, the commonest shame in our country, in the Western world, in, 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 even in our community, is the shame of sexual abuse. And the victim of sexual abuse is often left with this awful question. Is there something bad in me that made him do it? Is there something bad in me that this thing happened? And that shame stays with the, the people for too long. And uh, you know, and it's only at the cross we can let go of this shame. You see, Longer you carry shame, harder it is to, to let it go. First in all, is often the last out, especially when it comes to shame. The longer they are carrying that weight, it's harder and harder to let it go. Isaiah chapter 50 verse 6 says this. In NKJV, it says, I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who plucked out the beard. I did not hide my face from shame and spitting. And we know he's talking about Jesus in the death of cross. It's a prophetic utterance of Jesus on the cross. And here he said that I gave my back. He could have, Jesus being the Savior, he could have, he could have called 12 legions of angels to save him. The angels were ready, waiting for him, but he chose a different route. He didn't, he didn't call them, but he gave his back. And on the cross, 
He bore our shame. He bore your shame. He bore my shame. We don't have time to read the whole passage, but when you read from the Matthew, in the Matthew chapter 27, when you read the whole area of the, from verse 27 onwards, we see the area of the crucifixion at the cross. In verse 28, it says, and they stripped him. Verse 31, it says, and when they had mocked him, they took the rope off of him. And here in this whole passage, in the 27 to 31, it's so we can see at least twice where Jesus was exposed naked. But not just that, when you read down with the 35 and verse 30, 35, he said they crucified him and they said they divided the garment, his garment, his clothing that the clothing they had had, they, they just cast the lot and divided it. They took his clothes away. And verse 36 says, sitting down, they kept watch over him there. You see, sitting down, they watched Jesus hanging on the cross naked for three hours. When Jesus was on the cross, it's not like the picture was there where there was a cloth covered on the loins. No, but he took that shame. He took that shame all onto himself so that because of that, we don't have to be in shame. Hebrews 12, 2, it says, look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of God, right hand of the throne of God. You see, what is opposite to the shame? Glory. God suffered shame, and he just traded glory. When you read in Hebrews 2.10, it talks about he took our shame and he released the glory. And my brothers, my sister, I want you to know at the cross, you can bring your shame. Jesus paid the price. He took the shame up to himself. And there is a complete healing and restoration for us at the cross. And he be uh, the full forgiveness. Uh, and for the restoration of, of the and releasing where he releases the glory of our life on our life. The third component, and I'm just looking at the clock. I think you guys need to listen to me a little faster, right? You guys are a little, little slow here, right? So I just realized when I looked at the clock. The third component, rejection. And that's my, that was, that was a topic where I was planning to spend a little time tonight. And rejection is the deepest wound of the human spirit. Not being loved. Mother Teresa said that not being loved is the worst sickness. Everyone has experiences, right? And rejection, it attacks the very person that we are. It wounds us so deeply, it attacks the very person we are. It attacks our self-esteem. Right? It attacks who we are and the purpose in our life. Very unfriendly experience. And God wants us to know how deeply he loves us, accepts us, and appreciates us. You see, devil uses rejection a lot in our lives. There are various sources where the rejection can come in our lives. One, it could be in the, the family, and actually it's... Uh, one of the big things that happens in the, when you talk about when you're talking about the family is actually during pregnancy itself. And uh, it's, uh, when they're during the stress, when the, ba- when the mother is carrying baby during the stress, the baby can pick it up in the spirit inside. And that's that onwards that you can ex- baby experiences it. But in the family, we see the comparison in the family, being born with the wrong gender, or where there's a conditional love and acceptance that there is harsh discipline in the house, or even when there is no discipline in the house, when there's a failure to communicate loud, there's a death, divorce, there are various reasons in the family that can cause rejection in our life. But the second cause of the rejection is where we talk about the peers from the friends. And the peer pressure is huge, and we all know the peer pressure, 
you, you can experience, you know what peer pressure is, just so that to be part of that group and you're not rejected. Third, we talk about the society and to meet society's standards and expectations and to do what we were supposed to do it, right? To, so that we can be identified with them. And when we base our identity on somebody or something other than what God's word has to say, it makes us vulnerable to rejection. But I believe the fourth one, big rejection area is self-rejection. And especially, I think, especially girls experience it. I, don't, I think boys experience it too, but girls experience it a lot. You know, it's too long or it's uh, too, sh my hair is too short or eye color or the nose is in this shape or whatever it is, right? You made a reason to reject yourself. And what the rejection does is two things. It's in inside and outside. Inside, you, it gets very, you become very passive. You start thinking fantasy, self-pity, loneliness. And there's an urge to fit in for where you make the mistake. But in the outside, it's a rebellion and involved in the occult, wrong friendship, relationship. And a lot of things can go on with this thing. But the remedy for this is in cross. You see, Jesus experienced rejections. The first rejection we see in the Bible is in the Garden of Eden, where Adam and Eve, they rejected God. But then from there, we look at it. When we come to the cross, it's right when Jesus was about to be crucified. We see that. We even before we, we see that in the Luke 23, where the Jesus is, uh, Luke 20, uh, 23, where Jesus is brought to the court and people are, people are crying, away with this man. And the judge is asking, whom shall I release? And they said, Barabbas, Barabbas. And they said, what shall we do to this man? And they said, crucify him, crucify him. And we see Jesus, his own people are rejecting him. And as we know at the cross, Jesus hanging on the cross and he's crying out. And he says, Eloi, Eloi, lama shabbatani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And Jesus suffered that rejection. He took that rejection all upon himself. He knows what it means to be rejected. Psalm 118, 22 says, The storm which the builder rejected has become the chief cornerstone. My friends, my brothers, my sisters, cross is the source of healing. For to fight the battle of rejection, there are a few things we have to do. I'm going to wrap it up. There are a few things we have to do. One, we have to ask for forgiveness on our side. First, I ask forgiveness for ourselves, the wrong choices we did. Two, we have to forgive those who hurt us. You have to forgive those who hurt you. Otherwise, you cannot. The next thing is you have to pray specifically and break the power of rejection. Know that God acknowledges us and he acknowledges us. In fact, he is seated on the right side of God the Father. And when we come to the presence of the Lord, God says, ah, oh. Jesus says, Father, Father, look, that man, that boy, that girl who's praying, she's, she's praying in my name. I purchase with the blood. This is my brother. This is my sister. I accept him. And God acknowledges us, accepts us before God the Father and intercedes on behalf of us. Secondly, understand that God is patient with us. He's extremely patient with us. We are the clay in the hands of the potter. We are the clay in the potter. When it's marred, it's, he does not throw it out, but chase into the another vessel. And accept yourself for who you are. You know what? Jesus paid the price on the cross for us. And at the cross, 
In the cross, we have healing and deliverance from every guilt, every shame, every rejection. Once we know that we are loved, and that's where we just talk about, especially to the fathers, when we saw, I encourage to fathers and say, give. Once the pay kids know that parents love them, especially daughters, when they have the love of the father, it's very hard for them to feel rejected. And we need to understand, if you are someone who is missed out on that love, who is experiencing rejection, I want you to know there is somebody who loves you so much, accepts you, acknowledges you, who was willing to come down and die and shed the last drop of his blood for your sake. And he says, my son, my daughter, my brother, my sister, I acknowledge you, I receive you, and I will intercede on behalf of you before my God the Father. I would like to just close with a word of prayer. And if you are someone who's battling this guilt, shame, rejection, just want to encourage right now, even as you're praying, just talk to the Lord. And just bring this before God and say, Lord, here is what I'm fighting, minister, oh God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I seal your people, I seal your children with the blood of Jesus. Father, we just bring forth your sons and daughters, oh God. We are people of Father God, you who created our inmost being. You know us. From inside out, oh Lord, you know the pain, you know the shame, you know the guilt, you know what we go through, oh Father God. And I bring my brothers and sisters right now before you, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke every work of darkness that questions the identity and the purpose in Christ in their lives, that questions the garments of righteousness that you have covered them with, oh Lord. And I rebuke that guilt, shame, rejection, that spirit oh, that grips your people, oh Father God. I pray your peace will prevail and your love will you'll cover your people with your love, oh Father God. Even this night, oh Father God, enable each of your people to experience the warmth of your love and your presence. We humble ourselves before you. To you alone, we give all glory, honor, and praises. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 There is no bondage. Every chain is broken. There is no bondage. Jesus, our hearts are open. No guilt, no shame. All our stains erase. There is no bondage. Oh, there is no bondage. Every chain is broken There is no bondage Jesus, our hearts are open No guilt, no shame All our stains erased There is no bondage Freely give it to raging flood that covers us. For oh, the thoughts that come to decay, you send love to strip them away, and you left the truth. 
that we're free in you. There is no bondage. Jesus, our hearts are open. There is no bondage. No guilt, no shame, all our stains erase. There is no bondage. Oh, there is no bondage. Every chain is broken. There is bondage Jesus our hearts are open no guilt no shame all our chains erase there is no bondage praise the Lord Amen. Thank you so much for that time of worship, uh, Ken. And also a big thank you to <coughs> big thank you. Sorry, big thank you to Phil's and Chacha for uh just uh leading us in that powerful time of the word. It was definitely uh something that I have you know, I was writing notes all over the place just to make sure that I didn't miss any points. But again, thank you so much for just a blessed uh word. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure everybody here was blessed by that. Thank you very much, Phil's and Chacha, for that. Um, and after saying all of this, this has come to the end of Prayer House for tonight, guys. I just want to thank each and every one of you guys for joining on tonight. As always, we will see you guys tomorrow here at 9 o'clock. Bring your friends. Uh, we'd definitely like to uh, see them here soon. But other than that, thanks so much for joining tonight, guys, and I hope you guys have a good night. Bye, everybody.